All right, hello, wine drinking people. We are back. And man, what a busy week we had last week. Man, I still haven't had time to make it through the bell tasting. We'll throw that on today. And then we've got several other things to get through, several other tastings. So I'm going to get right to work here. And uh, Flavio just pointed out I had my Australian shirt on today. And we did, you know, plug a New Zealand winery. They do have a deep rooted rivalry, the Australians and the New Zealanders. So uh, nothing, no harm intended there, just a mere coincidence. All right, well, uh, let's see. What do we got uh, in the drinking section? Well, uh, like I said, we did a lot of drinking last week, and this is from some point at the end of the week, maybe on Friday of uh, last week. Uh, we had uh, Anthony Pannone in from the Florida Wine Company, and uh, we had a uh, – actually, I'm sorry. This was uh, – this is Angel Share, our buddy Vincent, with a couple of wines from the Mark Harold portfolio. Um, Acha, Red. All right, well, that's all it says on the bottle, so there's no way in God's green earth that you would know that this wine is uh, Tempranillo, which of god-awful things to throw in a wine from California. But this wine had some lovely sun-dried cherry fruit, strawberry fruit, and some dark spices, some light smoky flavors, not very reminiscent of Tempranillo from Spain, but a nice little wine nonetheless, made by Mark Harold, and uh, 50 bucks, whew, and a little expensive for a wine without any definition on the label. Okay, next up, window pane. And I know what they were doing when they came up with this one. All right, another wine without any varietals on the label. And it's 50% Petit Tron and other things. It doesn't, it's not important what's in the wine. It's important the name, the window pane that you cannot see through on the label. Anyways, uh, 2009 vintage and uh, pretty nice little wine. Big and chewy, black cherry liqueur-like fruit. As you can imagine, blueberry, some lovely floral notes from the Petit Sera, But... Uh, you know, a little hefty in price again, thirty-nine dollars for wine with no varietal designation on the label. All right, cobalt. Uh, this is the best thing on the table here. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa. How can you miss with that, right? Uh, dark cherry, uh, dark currant berry fruit in the nose. A nice hand of fresh earth and uh, herbs here, showing hundred percent from Coombsville. These wines tend to be a little earthier, and uh, some lovely currant berry fruit there. And a nice long refined finish, most excellent indeed for a hundred dollars a bottle. All right, then our folks from Constellation. And uh, Robert Mondavi Winery, one of the uh, headliners there. We had the Fumé Blanc Reserve 2008. And, uh, whoops, big marketing mistake. They took the word Tokelon off the label. One of the most famous vineyards in Napa. I love this fruit. Is all from Tokelon Vineyard. Melon and fig-like fruit with hints of kind of pink grapefruit. Some exotic tropical notes. Some flower, floral uh, hints here. And some... Um, Green herbs as well, something uh, I like a little bit of herbaceousness in my Sauvignon Blanc, but it's got to have a lot of everything else here. And this wine, distinct minerality on the palate, lovely texture, and a, a really long finish. One of my favorite Sauvignon Blancs from California, this reserve, Tokelon from Robert Mondavi. All right, the Franciscan Cuvée Sauvage. If you like a big, toasty, oaky Chardonnay, you will like this. It's got lots of oak, but lots of everything else, but uh, still a little bit too heavy-handed with the oak for my taste. 2007 Mount Veter. Cabernet Sauvignon, the best-selling Cabernet Sauvignon in the st store at $20 on sale. Still, are you kidding me? Shh. I don't even need to review that wine. Those You guys know what that wine's about. We sold more of that than anything else in the $20 section from California over the last year. Ravenswood Teldeshi, Zinfandel. Well, I don't have to tell you guys how I feel about Zinfandel, and this wine was even more underwhelming than the last time I had it. But uh, for those of you Zinfandel lovers, uh, you might like it. I just uh, found it a little bit tart. And one-dimensional, a little bit dried out on the finish. Wow. 2006 Mondavi Oakville. Hey, man, this is one of my favorite wines in the Mondavi lineup. And uh, I don't even know what price I'm allowed to sell it at. But we, we can sell it for under $30 a bottle somewhere. we got to negotiate with the distributors so we're not selling it too cheap. But at $29 a bottle, are you kidding me? Mondavi Oakville? Well, guess what? The 2007 just arrived. I think I'm going to be able to do the same price on the 2007. A great vintage. So check it out on, uh, well, today's email. We should have the price hammered out by the time we get this out. This is one of the best buys in the What I Drank Yesterday section, and it will get its own email as soon as I can get enough inventory to send out. All right, next up, we have the winemaker for Villa Maria Winery. And uh, this is one of the first wineries that I remember selling from New Zealand. I worked at National Distributing Company over 15 years ago, 12 years ago, whenever it was. We used to sell Villa Maria. And uh, I remember thinking... New Zealand wine? Who the heck's going to want this? And <laughs> sure enough, it has become a phenomenon. And this is actually Steve Smith was at this winery, one of the partners, and Craigie Range, who we've got coming in a week, and a master of wine, really smart guy. And I remember riding with him back in the day for these Villa Maria wines. So tasting them brought back fond memories, but the wines, 
you know, a little bit underwhelming. The Chardonnay, nice, pretty fresh, clean, politically correct, but that's all the nice things I could say about it. Sauvignon Blanc, uh, this is wine's a bit inspiring, you know, for a wine at $14, $15 or less. A very good example of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, some of that lovely kiwi, passion fruit, papaya, mango, tropical fruit showing, lovely freshness on the tongue, and uh, leaves you, your mouth salivating for food, one of the things we love about Sauvignon Blanc in general. All right, the Cellar Reserve, a bit more refined, a little bit more of that pea pod and passion fruit-like notes to the, uh, the, the nose, some fresh cut grass here as well, and a little bit more texture on the palate here, a little bigger and a little longer on the finish for 20 bucks. And then the Merlot and Cabernet Private Bin, not really what they're known for in New Zealand, the Merlot and Cabernet Blends, but this is uh, from Hawke's Bay, one of the more northern Appalachians on the northern island. So, uh, you know, better area for Cabernet Sauvignon and Bordeaux varietal, some nice dry herb notes and uh, fresh earth showing and some nice fruit overall, a little bit light. And then we had uh, the Pinot Noir Private Bin, uh, which was good, and the Pinot Noir Taylor's Pass, um, quite a bit nicer, uh, but still neither one of these wines would make it on my best of list here for New Zealand. All right, folks, that's what I had to drink yesterday. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.